watch the video of the programmable array logic this is also similar to that of PLEA okay so the flexibility is somewhat good but the complexity is more when we compare to that of PLA okay and it is a faster method that PLA is a faster method but here when we are doing the implementation this PL, PAL is somewhat slow when compared to that of PLA okay but the performance is good under the implementation flexibility is very good when compared to that of PLA okay so this PAL is also a combination logic device that used to implement the Boolean function in digital circuits. This programmable array logic, it is a device that has been used to implement the Boolean functions and it is a programmable and array. It is a device with the programmable and array and a fixed R array. Okay? Here the and array is programmable and the R array is fixed. In case of PLA, both of them is programmable. Okay? Both the and and R is programmable. Here only the under array is programmable, R array is a fixed thing. Okay? Now we are implementing with the four Boolean functions. We are having W, X, Y, and Z. Okay? So as usual, uh, it is a it is a four variable. Okay? Four variable. So we have to implement them with the, uh, two to the power of four. Okay? Sixteen self K map. We have to use A, B, C, D for that. First of all, W we have to calculate. Uh, implement them with the KMAP function we are getting W equal to A B C bar plus A bar B bar C D bar similarly for X we are getting A plus B C D then for Y we are having A bar B plus B bar D bar plus C D bar then for Z when we are implementing we are getting this function okay but uh, as per the rule of PAL so we are having for every function we are having three product terms that is a mandatory so that's why in the programming table also we have mentioned three product terms. So here we are having only two, but anyway we are in need of three. So in the terms of three we put a dash. So here also only two, we have to put a dash for the third term. So here already three terms are there. Now here in the Z function we are having four terms. Okay, but we should implement all with the three product terms. Okay, so we have to reduce this four to three. So how we are doing this? This A B C bar plus A bar C D, D bar is W. Okay, so we replace this term with the W. So the output variable that can be act as an input also. Okay, that we can see in the design. Okay, so this is replaced with the W plus A B bar C bar D bar plus A bar B bar C bar D. Okay, so now we are having three product terms. So first we implement a, the Boolean function and solve using K map and make it to a maximum of three product terms okay now the programming table so this is a programming table so for w you have to write the product terms here and for x and for y and for z we have to write the product terms in order okay then input and output so in the input we are writing a b c d and w Okay, so here we are using the W as one of the input, so it also comes here. Okay, so A, B, C, D, W, these are the inputs and the output. Okay, so output is what we are getting after we simply by using the K map. Okay, so whenever a term is coming, we have to put a 1. If there is a complement term, means put a 0. If there is no term, means put a dash. Okay, for the same what we did in PLA that we are doing in this PLA. Okay. Likewise, you have to complete it. If there is only two product terms in that function means, for the third one, we put a dash. Okay? Here, we have to consider as 10 input variables. Actually, that A, A bar, B, B bar, C, C bar, D, D bar and W, W bar. So, here we are having 10 input terms as per their rule. Because a variable and its complement also has been taken under the consider of a input. Okay? After drawing this programming table, come to the design part okay so as i already mentioned you have to mention the line okay the input lines so a a bar b b bar c c bar d d bar and w w bar okay first you have to draw the lines so this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 that represents the product terms what we mentioned here the same thing here we are doing okay and this a b c and d that represents the buffer elements okay input buffer elements so this is invert and this is non-invert matrix okay 
So we have to design these things and it is a programmable underlay and a fixed R array as we already told. Okay. So how many terms here it is coming? So three will be a mandatory for that. So you have to draw a line, draw this for one, two and three. You have to draw it. Then for the first term A, B, C bar. So A, B and C bar. You have to put a mark here. So this is this first one. This is A, B, C bar and then A, A bar, B bar, C, D bar. Third one there is no product term. So we are not going to use this. So put a cross mark here. Okay. So this is how the first output has been written. Okay. And then similarly at the same time W we are using as the input also. So we have to take a line okay, and draw a buffer then draw it to W and W for connecting that line. Okay. Similarly for the next product term the 4, 5, 6 has been taken into consideration. So for A we marked here, for B, C, D we marked here. There is no third product term. So this undergate we are not going to use. So here all fuses intact. So this is always a zero. Okay. Then for 7, 8, 9 the same condition. Here we are using all the undergates. Okay. So this one for A bar B, this is for B bar D bar and this is for C D. So here we are using all the gates. So keep as it is. Then for the final this 10, 11, 12 also here we are using all the product terms. So all ungates should be keep and wherever the variables are coming we should mark them with the cross mark. Okay. Finally this is Z. So this is W, X, Y and Z. So these are the input buffers. Okay. So this is how the implementation has been done with the PIA. Okay. So when compared to uh, that PLA programmable logic array PIA has more advantages and the implementation is somewhat difficult when compared to that of uh, the previous PLA. Okay. But the efficiency is very high in case of this PIA. Thank you for watching.